Conspiracy theories are fun, aren't they? They're about people dying, people sleeping with somebody else that you shouldn't be sleeping with, and other things of that nature. We're here to speak about some wrestling-themed conspiracy theories that we believe could be true. We're not going to say we fully believe they're true, we believe them 100%, we believe there's a chance. Mm. Like AJ Styles believes there's a chance the Earth is flat, <laughs> which we don't at all, do at we? All, not at all. No. 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 We believe the following conspiracy <laughs> theories we're about to speak about today, they could have a little bit of truth within them. Let us know down below how much SHIT you think we are full of for suggesting these following conspiracy theories could have a bit of truth to them. And also, let us know what conspiracy theories you believe from the world of professional wrestling could be true in the comments. Andrew, do you want to kick us off with your first offer? I should ask how we are. I'm good, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I believe that's a conspiracy. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing good, yeah. I yeah. believe that's a conspiracy as well. You're both miserable. <laughs> <laughs> you, know the, you know the truth, bro. Yeah, I know the truth. The tinfoil hat on. I've got cameras. Uh, Andrew, your first one. First one, here we go. Right. So originally, it was supposed to be Jeff Hardy versus Matt Hardy for the Cruiserweight title at WrestleMania 19. Now, we were looking on Reddit, obviously, for all these different things. There's a nice thread on there. This one is based off uh, a post made by Manufactured Monsters. So thank you very much for that. I went to school with Manufactured Monsters. Did you actually? We used to call him Manny. Lovely fella. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take your word for it. Conspiracy, though. So... Jeff loses to Chris Jericho at No Way Out 2003, right? Seemingly putting their feud at the time to bed so then Shawn Michaels and and Jericho can set up their match at WrestleMania 19. At this point, Jeff's booking is a little bit inconsistent, right? He's flip-flopping from being a babyface and a heel, briefly having the short program, you remember, with Trish Stratus and everything as well, Mm -hmm. where they team together for a bit. But he has nothing of any real consistency on Raw. So, following his loss at No Way Out, there's a backstage segment where Jeff slaps Matt after his brother basically just belittles him for losing all his matches and not really having any direction at the moment. So that to me very much felt like it was setting up a feud between the two as later in that night, Matt picks up the Cruiserweight title from Billy Kidman. So in the build-up to WrestleMania with Matt Hardy having the championship, you've got Mysterio, uh, Rey Mysterio. He wins a three-way match to challenge Matt Hardy at WrestleMania. But the way they did it, Felt a little bit rushed because at the time, there was no storyline that was established, right? Uh, And there wasn't a storyline until after the match when Vince McMahon saw, oh, we've actually got something here. Mm -hmm. So we'll build off. So originally, I think it was supposed to be Ray that won the belt there. But because they saw like how over everything was and how everybody was enjoying that match, they were like, well, we'll change it on the fly and then we'll do an actual storyline leading to Ray eventually winning. So... Perhaps because WWE were already taking note of Jeff's, he was deteriorating a little bit in the ring at this point. He was tardy, uh, late, turning up to shows or just no show in in general, and refusing to attend rehab. They had to change things rather quickly as they already knew Jeff's fate in the company. And that had somewhat also lined up with the rumors that around this time, WWE and Vince were looking to revitalize the Cruiserweight division, as I said before, when they Mm -hmm. saw that Matt and Ray were having a bit of a banger. They were like, let's build something off this. Wait, it was Matt, because just to, but I've never ever thought of this one to be a thing ever. Yeah. Just because when you think about that match at WrestleMania 19, you just think about Matt Hardy's journey to that match. Because mm. the entire angle of like him trying to make weight with his, yeah. his number one MF, you never really put any thought into who his opponent could be. Exactly. It was all about him. It was all about him, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so as a means to like revitalize the Cruiserweight division and bring new guys in, why not use Jeff, who at that point on Raw was just dwindling and it looked like they were at least setting up to something like that happening at WrestleMania 19. I think there's a lot of, I think there could be a lot of weight behind that one actually because we we, we saw well, not that at, much because it's cruise away. Cruise cruise away. away. Oh, you're you're awesome. on fire, Ross. Um awesome. I think that that could have been a could have been a thing. Mm. That would have been a really, really good match at that point, even though Jeff, yeah, as you said there, and that it was maybe not at his peak with no. turning up late to shows and not really being there. But that would have been a Really good match. I mean, we got to see it at what, 25? Last minute, yeah. 25? So and he, he eventually he burned, got there. he burned down a house and killed a dog. So. Well, <laughs> I mean, it yeah. built up to it, depends, really, didn't depends it? Depends what you want in your wrestling, really. <laughs> yeah. uh, did you say Jeff was on Raw? So Jeff was on Raw at this point, yeah. Because that's the big, like, oh, because mm. where was Matt and Ray? Where, well, they were on SmackDown, SmackDown, yeah. And there was... But 
It's not like today with their willy-nilly bollocks just going, oh, you go there, you go there. But I feel like that could still happen because do you remember when like Devon was just turning up he, at Survivor Series 2002 when he was supposed to be on SmackDown? He was like, um, That's when they got the Dudley, uh, the Dudley brothers back together. Well, that, yeah. that could have been, they, they, they could have seemingly got the Hardys back together, but then Jeff could have been like, yeah, I wouldn't oh, sight on. Oh, hoofed him in the nuts. Mm. 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 Do you think mm. that's once true? Let us know down below. Fraser, what's your first My offer? first one to the table is uh, that HBK was never that injured when he retired the first time back in 1998. Uh, I do think that he needed time off. I think he did get an injury. Mm. I think it's, the... yeah, when you watch that casket match and the match the against Austin, yeah, he's yeah. Just, clearly he is injured. It's when he's, walk, he's, when he's doing his pose, he's like, oh! oh. No. <laughs> he, so I will concede he does look in pain. I think mm. he definitely did get injured, but I don't think it was bad enough to keep him out of the ring for four years. Because... I think he saw that Stone Cold and The Rock were both going to eclipse him in terms of star power. They were going to be the guys that the company was going to get behind. He was going to have to you know, take a back seat to those guys. He was on a guaranteed amount of money per year on a set amount of years. 750000 Thanks. That's That's it, was, it was that much. So he was going to get that regardless. Vince would not let him go to WCW. So he would quite happily allow him to sit on the sidelines, recover from injuries, possibly go to rehab. We know that Shawn Michaels had many issues back then that he uh, with, with substances. So perhaps maybe he healed from the injury and he was still on the sidelines because of, because of rehab. Um, he was also noted to having some doing things in training at his training school that no injured man should be able to do, <laughs> such as taking bumps and wrestling like 1996 Shawn Michaels. It's also a bit weird that as soon as Stone Cold and The Rock sort of looked like they were on their way out, Shawn Michaels came back to the, you know, the, the front of the company. Mm. It was like, look, I can still wrestle. Like, I've not lost any time at all. Physical matches as well, weren't they? Yeah. Well, that was just because Triple H forced that, him to do that. Yeah. Brought it he out attacked him. him in the car park with a sledgehammer, put his head through a car window and everything. What Absolute, more do you want him to do? Exactly. That's very Pretend true. he's still injured. <laughs> just nurse that back. <laughs> um, but it's also notes that, you know, maybe 2002, that was going to be the last year of his original $750,000 per year contract. Mm. At which point, if he wasn't wrestling, they probably would have you know, cut him because there wasn't any WCW for them to be worried that he'd go to. He wasn't going to go to TNA, was he? So, well, you never know. For $750,000. Yeah. <laughs> <They're> sexy man. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it was a bit sexy of, boy. <laughs> I remember listening to Kevin Nash recently because it was Sean Oliver was like, oh, you know, looking back at your time in TNA, he's like, I worked five days a month. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think money would have been an issue for him back Probably then. Probably not. Just working that little. Yeah. Um, but that is my first conspiracy to the table. I, I do think he, he milked that injury a bit. Mm. I think he was fine after maybe 2000 and they just let him rest to get, to stay out of the path of, Stone Cold and The Rock. I fully believe that he wasn't injured for four years. There wasn't four years worth of injury there. Because you do watch the matches, I said, with Austin, and he is clearly yes. sore. Yeah. His back is in, bad, in a bad way. But yeah, I think time away was needed, but not four years. I think there's something to that one. You know? yeah. Yeah. You, I, yeah, I think there's something to that one as well. Obviously, with everything that happened with Hall and Nash as well. I mean, the, the, there's something there, right? To Vince McMahon being like, oh no, I don't want my one of my other top guys like going over there, going with mm. his mates and having a merry old little time. And I think there's also something to Shawn Michaels pretending he's more hurt than he is. Mm. If you look at what happened the year prior, yeah. his smile being yes. lost and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not being able to take, what match was it he wasn't able to take part in, but then he was able to take part in a different match where he wasn't going to drop the title to Brett. Oh, I can't remember the actual Whatever match, it was, he, yeah. He's not, uh, he's not unfamiliar with doing this, so he doesn't But he was a lose. different guy back then. He's he was. Found the, he's found the good book yeah, and all that sort of stuff. All, and that. all the Lord. All praise. <laughs> all praise. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, what's your first conspiracy? Mine's, I'm going straight for the jugular. Hulk Hogan's Black Eye at WrestleMania 9. Oh, was, the kayfabe reason given back then in 1993 was that the million dollar man was paying off some scary men to do some horrible things to Hulk mm. while he was getting his swole on in the gym. That was the kayfabe reason given in storyline. Hulk Hogan turned up at WrestleMania 9 for that bollocks finish. Oh, it makes you angry, doesn't oh, yeah. it? Oh, oh it's dreadful. Oh, justice for Yoko and Brett. <laughs> oh, so, oh. Um, the kayfabe reason was that the million dollar man set some men on him. That's why he's got the black eye out of nowhere. The official kayfabe reason given by Hulk, and I say kayfabe reason because I don't think it's true at all, <laughs> yeah. brother, brother. was that bef the day before WrestleMania 9, he was on a jet ski and had a little, a little accident. Mm. He didn't poop his pants, no. 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 He went arse over tit over the handlebar of the jet ski and then because he was wearing a light well I've got the quote here right he said this is what he says on the, okay. uh, the on the After the Bell podcast with uh, Corey Graves an official WWE podcast I just yeah, yeah. Um, I so he's on a, a jet ski thing with Brutus the Barber Beefcakes on one jet ski 
He's on one. And then their friend, Ellis Edwards, is on the third one. He says, Brutus takes off, going straight ahead. Macho takes off, going straight ahead. I don't know where... I'm, oh, sorry. Macho was the fourth man. Okay. There's four jet skis. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ellis is kind of sticking with me. So I go to jump this wave. I get thrown over the front of the ski, and I got a life jacket on. So as I go un- into the water, I try to duck down underwater, but that damn life jacket brought me back up, and the jet ski hit me in the face. So that's the official reason. He's okay. just making himself sound cooler, isn't yeah. he? Like, oh, I was trying to jump this wave, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> Idiot. To be fair, you do, I, I did jet skiing this year in Tenerife. And was my it God, fun? Oh, my God. Yeah. You do hit yeah. some, some new gnarly waves. Oh, right. man, yeah. I'm just as cool as Hulk Hogan. <laughs> well, you're actually, you're cooler. You didn't fall off your jet ski. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. I'd had a passenger as well. Yeah. So take that one, yeah, Terry, you virgin. You um, and he said in an interview with Access TV in 2011 that he broke his orbital socket, which is where the, you know, your mm-hmm. eyes and whatnot, mm-hmm. And he required more than 100 stitches under the skin. Ooh. Under the skin. Under, under the skin. We attach muscles. What? I, that sounds horrendous. Mm. So I think basically the real reason, it's mooted by a lot of people online, mm. but I think okay. Jim Cornette mm. has summed it up quite wonderfully. Uh, macho man battered him, basically. Uh, so this is what Jim Cornette had to say about it. Uh, Savage found out that Elizabeth had run off to Hogan's house and was staying with Linda, Hogan's ex-wife, but wife at the time, and because Linda and uh, Elizabeth were friends. And Hogan didn't tell Savage that Linda was there, which is why Savage confronted him with that. He confronted him by punching him in the effing eye, and that's why Hogan had his black eye at WrestleMania 9. And I like it, after the way Hogan conducted himself during that storyline with Elizabeth and Macho Man, I can see why Macho Man was powerful. Maybe wanted to, yeah. yeah. He clearly fancied her, didn't he, Terry? <laughs> he did, yeah. 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 Putting her on his shoulder and whatnot. And... I mean, we know that their relationship in general was just tenuous anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like that one does. I feel like that one could very, very well be real. And you wouldn't want that out there in public, like your big old baby face. Even though, you know, it was yeah. a bit further down after the yeah. steroid. Was it after the steroid trial, this one? Or just uh, before? 99. Whatever it was, Hogan had a bit yeah. of a reduced role compared yeah. to what he had done. Because he may have invented, what was it, like seven out of the first eight manias? And this yes. was the, yes. was this the, the first odd. one? The odd one that he hadn't, yeah, I think yeah. so. And then he just came in. Yeah. Came he, wouldn't, by. he wouldn't the biggest star getting yeah. sparked out by the second biggest star. Yeah, it wouldn't look like, good, <laughs> good for the company, would it? I would like to think this is a, a combination of the two stories, actually, that Macho Man punched Hogan As... off of the jet. <laughs> 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 Catching a wave, yeah, just yeah. like, what? Going off a wave just and then just like a drive-by, hook. just Macho Man coming past you. Speed <laughs> 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 off. That's how I think it really went down. We've got a middle of two stories there. I prefer that one. That sounds so much better. Match man attacked him. Just yeah, drive by punch on a jet ski. If one man could, it's Macho Man. I like yeah, think maybe he did like went by on the jet ski and then just like gave it one big rip so it continued on. Yeah. He jumped off elbow drop and just the ricochet off of Terry's oh, like body it. allowed him to jump back on the nine pitches for the breakup of <laughs> <laughs> it's like in action films where someone's riding on a motorbike and then they do like the endo, swerve oh, yeah. it around and you just like slap oh. them in the face with the wheel oh, of the car. Yeah. Yeah. I watched a video of a man at a drag meet, a drag like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. where they do the big like okay. handy beans yeah. and what in the car park. And uh, this car was doing a big handy bean. He was standing a bit too close and he got sort of dragged under the car oh. and the wheels spin on the car, pulled his pants off. <laughs> it's the most that. incredible <laughs> video I've ever seen. How he didn't lose a limb, I don't know. Yeah. He just lost his trousers. Anyway, this is about wrestling conspiracy yes. theories. Not how that man lost his trousers, but kept his legs. Yes. Andrew, what's your second one? Second one. <laughs> so, uh, another one from Reddit as well. Thanks to uh, the Hispandinavian. What a fantastic username that is. I went to school him as well. Are you going to school him? <laughs> lovely, <laughs> lovely fellow, yeah. Sure, he turned out to be a teacher or something. His right? real name was Aiden. Oh, oh yeah. he works upstairs. Like yeah. <laughs> so, the Honky, Tonks man, uh, the Honky Tonk Man's intercontinental title run was somewhat accidental, thanks to a no-show. But at the same time, it also helped snowball some other careers as well. So, after winning the IC title at WrestleMania 3, Ricky Steamboat entered into a feud with Mega Heat Seeker, the natural Butch Reed. Not long after the w- winning the strap, though, Steamboat asked Vince if he could possibly take some time off to be with his family since his wife was due to give birth very soon. Two weeks is apparently what Steamboat asked for, and old Vinnie Mac thought that was far too long. <laughs> so he called for Steamboat to drop the title in a pinch. So... The man Ricky was feuding with at the time, Butch Reed, obviously seemed like the perfect candidate, in, in large part due to the fact the two were duking it out on TV and at house shows at the time. However, as the story goes, the night Vince was planning to switch the strap, Butch Reed either no-shows or is ridiculous, ridiculously late to the venue, causing Vince to panic and look to top guy Hulk Hogan for his input in all of this. So apparently Jake Roberts' name is mentioned, but he's also a no-show too. However, when the two are brainstorming in a corridor, the honky-tonk man just innocently walks past the pair when Hogan blurts out, what about him? 
leading to the deal being struck between all parties that the Honky Tonk Man was about to win the title that evening on an episode of Superstars in June of 1987. So we've got that, obviously. That is how apparently uh, Honky Tonk Man's IC title reign came to be. But Randy Savage was apparently upset about the ordeal. He, he wanted the IC title too. But seeing that Honky Tonk Man was becoming a top heel during his title run, McMahon gave Savage a grander prize instead, the WWF heavyweight title. Randy would get the belt uh, in the one-night tournament at WrestleMania IV, defeating Ted DiBiase in the finals. Mm -hmm. It was a bigger title to receive, but with Savage getting promoted, someone else needed to be sent down a peg or two, and that was DiBiase. So DiBiase had become the biggest heel in the WWF at the time and was promised a world title run no uh, to further elevate his character as well. But with Savage then getting the belt instead... It was DiBiase who became the odd man out. So Vince's bright idea to keep DiBiase happy was to create a new title just for DiBiase, hence obviously the million dollar championship. Uh, and then DiBiase was obviously angry and resentful towards the Honky Tonk Man for all of this going on. Uh, however, DiBiase said before in the public as well that having the million dollar championship made him more money than the WWF title ever would. So basically, this one little this one little on the chance thing that happened, the honky tonk man becoming the IC uh, the IC champion, sorry, led to a lot of other careers also just like snowballing as well. So this feels very much like uh, Charlie Day in Always Sunny. And he's got the all the pins He's like, yeah. On the chalkboard. <laughs> I've not seen it yet. Um, <laughs> King Coffee. Just my hand it's like, is yeah, shaking. It's like everything's linked. It's all con big conspiracy. Mm. It's, I, I think there's a lot of truth to that, I think. I think that is one that Honky Tonk had. I feel like it was quite an accidental win. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. You mean to tell me yep. what is still... As we're sat here in 2022, mm -hmm. yep. the longest ever single reign mm -hmm. of the Intercontinental Championship at 454 days Correct. Yep. started because Honky Tonk Man walked in the right place at the right time. Yes. Main, so the thing and is... And also what's interesting, you mentioned Savage there. Mm -hmm. Whose reign did Honky Tonk Man overtake to become the longest reign? And it was Hon it was Savage. It was, Ooh. it was, wasn't it? February it was. the 8th, 1986, oh. his started. And then June the 2nd, Honky Tonk Man started. Really so maybe there was a bit there. Maybe like, there was a bit there. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's why he was getting mad. <laughs> I don't, like, I can, I like the bit about it being Butch, like wanting, Vince wanting it to be Butch, Butch Reed feels real to me in yeah. terms of because they was him and Ricky Steamboat were literally just feuding at the time. I believe the thing about wanting time off as well. Yeah. Because yeah. Steamboat's wife wanted him to take time off and Vince yeah. was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Two weeks is far yeah. too long, Paul. Because it wasn't long. He'd only just won the IC belt at WrestleMania 3. Yeah. So to drop it a few months after felt a bit, especially for Steamboat as well, felt mm. a bit weird. Uh, so I think the story is that Vince wanted to put the belt on a top heel which Butch Reed would have fit the bill because Hulk Hogan was the top baby face with the main strap. So they wanted a heel and face yeah. dynamic kind of thing. So that, that to me makes a lot of sense. But just like the fact that that all, that all could have started through Butch Reed not being there and then just honky tonk man walking down the corridor. <laughs> okay. I guess there is, there is a chance maybe when he yeah. got the title, Vince was captivated and then thought, oh, this just looks yeah. good. This must be doing. Honky tonk man was good, wasn't he? It was very good. And he was perfect in the heel role of always uh, he'd lose his matches, wouldn't he? Because he used <laughs> the championship advantage, didn't he? The champion's yeah. advantage all the time. And that was like, I thought that was a really good way of doing it. So, uh, there you go. so that's the conspiracy, at least. He is an odd choice to have the longest reigning intercontinental championship reign of all time. Of all time. Like, that's that's a long time to have the belt. And Honky mm. Tonk Man, as much as he was a great IC champ and a great heel, it's not, as you said, he overtook Randy Savage. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. It's been a long while since... Oh, what's maybe... the next... Yeah, what's the next more modern... Some, uh, 2004, Shelton Benjamin, 244 okay. oh. days. Then we've got Cody in 2011, 234 days. Mm. Uh, then we've got... Ooh, I like Santino's Shins honkometer. Shinsuke, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura was 201 days in 2019, but that doesn't okay. count. That, he uh, barely just, even did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Defended just appeared for his... <laughs> there we go. Completely by accident. Longest ever reigning yeah. IC title. Well, singular, singular IC title. Yeah. Yeah. Frazier. <laughs> right. This is a big tinfoil hat one. Uh, Vince McMahon sent Vince Russo to WCW <laughs> as a mole with the intention of bringing down the company from the inside. Um, now, I'm undecided personally whether I think he was still under, you know, still getting a 
a bit of a payday. Oh, you're ready to get paid by oh, wow. handshake okay. agreement. Okay. Um, but I do think that McMahon let Russo go to WCW knowing that he would tank the company with putting the belts and, <laughs> and, and doing some wacky storylines that were just not going to fly. Uh, like he put the belt on David Arquette. Like that Great feels very much crossover yeah. appeal though, bro. Right? Yeah. We but... still talk about it to this day. Oh, we go and watch a screen film. Well, okay. we're champion. Then. Right, the Rumble, the best film ever made. Exactly. A diamond upside down is a what? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a. Yeah. Vince Russo <laughs> being made WCW champion. Explain yes. that one. It's from Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Was it Brooklyn? <laughs> some kind of New York <laughs> place. I don't Brooklyn. know. Um, so I, I think there's maybe some handshake agreement there that possibly uh, Vince knew that this was going to seal the death of WCW. Uh, alongside this conspiracy theory, though, um, Ted Turner execs possibly maybe working against WCW in the Ooh. last few years because they knew that the ratings were going down mm. and possibly going, uh, let's just get it cancelled. Well, we're still getting money from it, but we can't breach the contract. Because for the longest time, right, they didn't necessarily want WCW on their programming, but Ted Turner was the one that really rallied for them to be on yep. TV. So I think maybe there was mm. some... Turner was maybe working against them, along with knowing that Vince Russo was tanking the company, because surely you would get rid of him. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's an interesting one as well, because the story peddled by Russo is that Vince just like was so inhumane about like, because Vince was like, I forget what the story was about, like, want to do something with his family or something. Mm -hmm. And McMahon was basically like, I don't care about your family. Get to work and this sort of stuff. He's like, oh, you don't care about me, bro. I'm going to move. Yeah, I'm going to be. So it was something like that anyway. But it's an interesting one to put forward. I mean, that, yeah. that, that whole don't it's care nice about your family. nice story though, isn't it? Oh, like, it is. oh, you yeah. don't care about my family. I, I hate you. I mean, that's that's the Ricky <laughs> Steamboat thing, right? <laughs> like, I don't care about your family. Um, <laughs> but I think that there's maybe some truth. Sorry, it was getting one. a babysitter, wasn't it? It's just coming to me head there. Yes. Yeah, getting a babysitter for him. He's like, oh, no, you should I don't know. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> so is that like, is that in terms of Vince, Vince willingly knew that Russo was going to tank the company? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, Always... I'll shake your hand and then off you go. Or was it that they were working Maybe in cahoots? Maybe working in cahoots. Because for every 10 ideas Russo had, McMahon would use one. Yeah. Uh -huh. He would just get rid of the nine crap ones. So yeah. Maybe banking on. Mm. I don't know. Maybe Russo didn't even know that Vince was playing him there. And yeah. just going, oh, I know you'll go to WCW and that's going to tank the viewership. Mm. I just I think, think Russo would have got paid a lot more money and had more freedom to do what he wanted me. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm going to say no, that one. You know, suits them it. both though, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. It yeah. does. Russo getting a lot of money to go and do whatever he wants with having an inflated ego and having no one to tell him no. Mm. Vince going, cool, I don't have competition anymore. <laughs> 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 it's fine. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's an interesting one. That, that isn't it. Yeah, I feel like you could sit on that one for ages and just speculate because because there's so we'll, many have to do, we'll have to tie Vince Russo up and just waterboard him or something like that and just get, <laughs> get the truth out yeah yeah we'll let's do it blindfold him and all he'll hear is doot, doot, and he'll be sat in the middle so of a little model train <laughs> of a little model railway what's with, with these trains bro <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback to lockdown time. That is a callback. What was that again? <laughs> it was uh something to do with Adam telling him to go onto his stream and say choo choo or something like that. I can't remember what it was. It was something, but yeah, uh, Vince Russo was just like, "What's with this train gimmick, bro?" And then, uh, and then he just he abruptly turned the stream turned off. His stream <laughs> off. Adam Cyberbully and Vince Russo oh, via God. other humans. You couldn't write it, could you? Anyway, I'm going to put one forward that's not really talked about by many people, but one that I once again saw on the internet and was like, oh, it could be true that. WWE intentionally kept Daniel Bryan at the time on the shelf, knowing that when he returned, it would overshadow Roman Reigns. Mm. Mm. Okay. So when Bryan retired in 2016, this was still very much in the period where Vince McMahon was going to make Roman Reigns his new Hulk Hogan babyface champion, no matter what was happening, no matter yeah. how many boos he got at WrestleMania 32, which deafened that arena. Let me tell oh, you, yeah, I was you there. there yeah. you My there. God, it was loud, the boos, so they were. So no matter what was happening, suffering, sucker tash, all that kind of stuff. Interesting with Logan Paul. Did you see that this week? Oh, he mentioned I that did. in the podcast. Yeah, it's like, oh, I had no equity back then, so I had to say everything he'd written down and highlighted, but now I could just say oh, no. Imagine whatever. how yeah. painful that must have been. He's like, Roman's like, I've done all this good material for the last three years, but people still go surf and surf it here. And then wink at the camera. Mm. It's, the, it's the wink oh, that's man. the worst part. It was bad anyway. But during this time, obviously, Vince, you know, want, he had a big old boner for Roman, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, a stonk. So, and obviously, uh, a couple of years before that. <laughs> a stonk. 
Whether they're meant to or not, I'm going to quickly move on from that. Whether they're meant to or not, the Yes movement got off organically, didn't it? And it just did, took yeah, off it and did. it flew away with the eagle's nest. I mm. believe the, well, I don't know if it's even a theory. I think it's just widely accepted, isn't it? That Vince wanted the main event of WrestleMania 30. Yes, WrestleMania, of course, according to Michael Cole, to be Randy Orton versus Batista in a singles match. But obviously he changed that when he heard the crowd and how big Daniel Bryan was getting. Mm. Then the injury happened. So I reckon, because where this comes from is a lot of um, non-WWE doctors given... Brian Danielson, the clear to come back to wrestle, but the in-house medical team say, no, we can't clear you. Mm -hmm. So that's where this mm -hmm. entire conspiracy comes from, just to, to not get in the way of Roman Reigns, because we got there eventually. Yeah, yeah, we did. Fire a heel turn, but we got yeah, there yeah, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Brian, obviously, coming back would have just completely usurped mm -hmm. everything Reigns was doing at that time. I have to mention as well, obviously, the concussion lawsuit that was going around at the time, so maybe that was the thing, just saying, oh, we just can't risk it, and then yeah. have the knock-on effects tick the implications yeah. into that uh, concussion mm. thing but I think there's something to that just wanting to keep Danielson because that there was a, obviously when Punk left way back in the day just to mention CM Punk there was obviously something about the little guys not being what Vince wanted and him being reluctant to use them in such a big role and mm -hmm. Punk and Brian changed everything in WWE land for all the wrestlers no matter what the size was so is there something to that I've got no idea I mean, but I, I like the idea of it yeah <laughs> there could be I mean we saw how much Daniel Bryan overshadowed Reigns in that rumble spot in 2014 when he came back from his first injury. Oh, that's when Reigns was still getting cheered. Yeah. Well, the 2014 rumble was the one that he got booed out of the arena. That was 15. 15, sorry. That's the rumble I mean. And yeah, 2015, I should say, when he got booed out of the arena. When he went out and the, and the, the rock, rock came out and was yeah. like, yeah. Oh, I'm really no, sorry. no, cheer him. Because that's when, yeah, that was when, was that Ray Mysterio getting booed? No, yeah, no, yeah. Was because the, was because everyone before? was like, come on, Brian, come yeah. on, Brian. Yeah. And then Ray comes out and everyone's like, boo. Because it was 50 when he got dumped out in the middle by Bray Wyatt, wasn't yes. it? So yes. it was 14 when the, the Ray stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're getting rumbles mixed up. Yeah. But I, but I can see that being a thing just because Vince McMahon is a petty boy. Yeah, no, I can see that one. I can see that one as well, especially because, you know, what Vince wants, Vince usually gets got yeah, yeah. yeah in terms to, yeah. of uh just like if i mean obviously you know it was natural with the Dan daniel bryan stuff and they had to sort of pay attention with how much stuff was going on but obviously i, I mean vince obviously just wasn't happy with that he very much wanted roman reigns to be over with people i don't yeah. know why you just put in that position if you were vince back then just sit back and think oh who is it's, organically the most it's it's right make, me, yeah, make, make me the most money yeah just sit back and have no thought about it exactly it happens. Yeah. everyone that gets over them on themselves or by themselves Zack Ryder. <laughs> Zack Ryder. rusev rusev <laughs> had a really great opportunity to be a main eventer and they just squandered it I, I assume maybe it's to do with the fact that they see someone as being the perfect person to cross over into other brands as well that right? might be a thing as well i'm after to mention as well what the networks want because yeah, i think that's yeah. the thing we overlook a lot is what the networks want to see like in the wrestling just in terms of how it looks and what they have at the top of the card and who mm. represents the show mm. on their networks i think that's the thing we don't talk about enough so maybe with something to do yeah. with that as well yeah yeah i think that's fair i think it, i think there's a, a bit of truth in that definitely a bit of truth in that it's a bit a little, a little, a little, a little sprinkling speech. yeah that's it for me in terms of what i believe could actually be true i don't believe that uh the street could have been ended by is that, was that your third one? Have I just still... Oh, I'm very sorry. Go for it, Fraser. Go right, Fraser. so I'll jump into my third one. Uh, this one is... Uh, I, uh, despite saying I do believe a little bit of it, <laughs> I would like to believe a little bit of it. Um, this is actually off the back of what Paul Heyman said on, on Inside the Ropes tour. Where he yeah, was me like, and Jack were if, there. Well, yeah. yeah, he's in Glasgow. Like Glasgow. 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 You're right, pal. Um, where he sort <laughs> of goes, if Brock Lesnar wanted to end the streak, he, he could have. Like, what if Brock Lesnar went into business for himself? And just the whole suspension of disbelief in that sort of thing is like, if there's anyone that could do it, it's mm. Brock Lesnar. Um, but then they had the graphic ready straight they away. They did. But what I think is more plausible, which I'm, Brock I'm back in, telekinesis. <laughs> that's exactly it. He He's part of the X-Men. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what I think is more possible is that Undertaker maybe suffered, his, or we know he suffered his concussion very early into the match. Yeah. Maybe they called an audible mm. and changed the outcome of the match because it sucked the life out of that building for a while and they had to get it back up for the main event. But like, it just seems like a weird choice to end the streak. Brock didn't need it. There was a concussion. There was quite a clear injury. Mm. I just, I think there's maybe something there. I don't fully believe it in terms of like Brock went into business for himself. Yeah. But I think maybe there's more to it than just Brock was always booked to go over. It's one of them decisions that, that legitimately you could see as that being a thing to happen. Mm. Because it did suck the it did suck the life out of the arena, and watching it, it just felt so. And I mean, I, I you know, I guess it was supposed to feel like, oh my god, this is unbelievable yeah. that this is happening. But it felt 
So much so in a way that he sort of was just questioning like, oh, what, really? Like, yep. is it actually supposed to go that I way? I mean, who else? Who else would have done it? We did a podcast about yeah. this a few months no, ago. Try and find it if you want to listen to that yeah. hour of fantastic wrestling analysis. <laughs> but I, I too believe that Lesnar shouldn't have ended the streak. Yeah. Mm. He didn't need it, but I don't believe that. I, yeah, it's, I, it's, don't want, I don't want the streak to be there that much. But yeah, I, I, I would I, believe I, that. I'm, mm. I'm happy it's over with. because it's, <laughs> it's like we don't have to see Undertaker at WrestleMania every year now. <laughs> um, but even like the small things, when I remember watching it with the ref counting and sort of it looking like he's hesitating for the third fall you know and it's like oh is that mm. is that meant to happen or Heyman's reactions was like almost legit and it was like oh I just want to, I want to look, suspend that disbelief put that tinfoil hat back I just on. remember it how nonchalant yeah. Heyman was in that talk where he's just like who would have known yeah yeah. if Lesnar went into business for himself you know who else could do that Brock Lesnar could mm. but yeah. who would have known exactly. nobody would have yeah just add into the, the lore oh. of it even more <laughs> oh. My God. WWE covered it up as well. <laughs> <laughs> we walked backstage and just told Vince, this is how it went. And that was it. Andrew, do you have any more conspiracy theories you believe could be true? I have one more, and this last one is from uh, Eli Frakes on Reddit as well. I went to school with him as well. He's a nice guy. Frakey, yeah. we used to call him. We used to call him Cornflake. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't guy. like that, though. He had, like, puffy hair like a cornflake. Oh, okay. And also Corn... his name is What so cornflakes so. are you eating that have puffy hair? If you... The outline of a cornflake. <laughs> oh, <right>. Yeah. <laughs> Just, like, Some on top. Ha- yeah. cornflakes. <laughs> like, do you, uh, do you remember Fido Dido, the 7-Up guy? No. He just used to have his hair Fido up Dido? Yeah. I remember Dido. No, not... I, I will go down with this ship. ship. Right. This this one from Eli Frakes. Are you ready? Uh, Mick Foley was always supposed to go through the roof of the cell when Taker's choke slammed him through it, despite what both parties have said, and they both lie about it to protect Foley's marriage. Uh, if you watch the match, when Taker climbs the cell and they tussle, tussle a bit on, on the roof of the cell, Foley can be seen looking at a specific panel for a prolonged period of time. <laughs> no, the, no <laughs> I'm not joking. He's literally there, right? He stood there, kind of just like, he's got this chair in his hand. And he's looking away from Undertaker, and he's looking right, and then he puts the chair down on this on this. Uh, so imagine like bending down like an, an old fella in the garden, like, like oh, is that the, I need to walk to plants here. Yeah. Is, is that the one I need to go through? Um, but yeah, so when when they both climb on top of the on top of the cell and they're tussling for a bit, and Foley's hitting Taker with the chair, Foley can genuinely be seen looking at a specific panel for like quite a quite a while at least, while Taker's selling the chair shots now. Uh, what Eli Frakes says here is they they use the they use the chair to mark the panel that he's going to go through because they do drop it I believe on the one that he actually does get chokes on through okay. eventually. Well, yeah, because it follows him down. Yeah, mm. and the panel breaks perfectly. Now, if we think back to the uh, Undertaker and HBK match, uh, Bad Blood, like the yeah. first one, when they're on the roof and they're tussling and they're like Taker's got him up like this and he's throwing him about on the roof of the cell, the weight distribution is much, it's much better. Like the thing doesn't dip as much. It's quite but Foley a weighs 150 yeah. pounds more than Shawn Michaels. I mean, that's true. <laughs> but from when, you watch, from when you watch the one with Taker and Foley, it looks more like a trampoline. Like it the does, way yeah. it just folds in between Undertaker and Shawn Michaels when they're on top of the cell. Uh, so um, they also go on to say like you can see that the panels aren't set up individually like the ones hence why the sort of the weight I guess distribution is a little bit more Mm -hmm. Um, and when telling the story about this like about the chokes on through the top of the cell Mick always emphasizes the unplanned nature of the chair following him down while the surprise breaking of the cage is never actually mentioned only in passing or just not at all and obviously I think I think he said before like he was pretty much passed out at that point, so he doesn't remember going through. But that could just be a little bit of a ploy to be like, I don't, don't remember that happening. Because they've both said, Taker and Foley before have said, to going through it was never actually planned. Like, okay. at all. See, I've, I'm sure I've seen Foley cover his ass by saying it was planned, but it was always planned just to break. And he would like roll down it and just have a little fall off the end of the... Because oh. it was like pointing towards down yeah. the ring. I'm sure I've seen Foley say that before. Okay. But the way it just like swings yeah. like dead open. I, f- I feel like that's probably... Might just be covering his arse. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Either way, he's covering his arse. Because I think... <laughs> did you mention the safe marriage bit yet? Yeah, so that... yeah, so this, so this is obviously... We know that, that, that Foley's wife is oh, very and rightly so worried about her husband doing all these daft things uh, in wrestling, obviously. with with They've got the kids and everything. They don't want to see the dad, you know, uh, critically hurt. 
Um, so I can see that as being a way of being like, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to do that. Was this before or after the match with The Rock at the Rumble? Was so this would have been, been after. before. Before? Yeah, because yeah, that Rumble 99? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that doesn't yeah. add up then, does it, Mick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I can see that. That's one. I can see it not happening. I don't know yeah. who yeah, it's, yeah. it's one that's yeah. like, only Mick Foley knows. Yeah. <laughs> like, it is. I always found it was weird how they just literally had it. It looked like sandwich bag ties, didn't it? Like yeah. keeping the cage up. Ah, it was up. like cable yeah. ties, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, just, just cable ties. Just weird. And, Especially with and, heavy boys. Yeah, yeah because right. you just see you see the spots that, that HBK and Undertaker do on the top of that, where he's literally, Taker's literally got him in the air like that and he's body slamming him and everything. Nothing. Oh, makes so you think. Maybe the chair wasn't meant to fall after him. Mm. I can yeah. see that being the case. That yes. was unfortunate. Yeah, because yeah, that's what really him in the face. Yeah. yeah, right then. So that's it. I think that's it. Well, the ones we can talk about on YouTube yeah. for obvious reasons. There's other ones. The yeah, monetization is the thing we don't want to do here. Um, so that's the ones we believe could have a, a little bit of truth to them. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Push yours also in the comments down below. What wrestling, um, uh, wrestling conspiracy theory do you believe could be true? Any closing remarks before we bugger off and put our tinfoil hats on, sit in our thinking chairs and have a glass of whiskey to round out the day. That sounds like a lovely night. That does sound really good, actually. Can we do, yeah, that? Well, we'll do that? Get yourself a poang from Ikea. What's one of them? It's one of those ones, it's like, it's got the frame and it like bounces. I've got one at home. It's my thinking chair. It's also my people oh, watching. it's a chair. Chairs. I didn't nice. know. <laughs> just, just get yourself just a poang. Poang. A, a poang. Let me quickly Google this. I'm going to get a poang. Poang chair. Yeah, one of those ones. Oh, we had one at home when I was oh, younger. Oh, they're really oh, comfy. Oh, they look nice. I sit on yeah. it and I just look at people oh, out my window. I might get rid of my computer chair and get one of them, you know. Oh, it's yeah. not a computer chair. There's really loads quite far yeah, away. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, but I don't I don't have a computer here anymore, so I might as well use it for my games and that. Oh, yeah. it's a good gaming oh, chair. I love it. A FIFA Licious and a Poang. I'm all, I'm all for a Poang now. <laughs> poang or Illuminati? You decide. That's the end of the video.